What's up guys, it's Kristen from Anime Collective back again with a new video because I recently just got in the third and final Hellsing Deluxe Edition. I just finally completed the entire story, um, so I really wanted to get this review out for you guys. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys an inside look of Volume 1, but I'm also going to be giving you a look inside Volume 3 because at the end, um, they've included some extra material including commentary and much, much more, um, so stick around for that as well. In addition, I'm going to compare the first Deluxe Edition to the first paperback volume as well so you can see what what makes these different. Let's get into it. First up, I want to talk about what makes the deluxe editions unique from other Hellsing manga releases. So Dark Horse released both individual volumes and deluxe editions of Hellsing with English translation. There are a total of 10 individual volumes of Hellsing and the deluxe editions complete the full series as well, with deluxe edition 1 collecting volumes 1 through 4, 2 collecting volumes 5 through 8, and 3 collecting volumes 8 through 10. The deluxe editions are printed in a larger 7x10 format. Here's a look at what the first individual volume looks like next to the first deluxe edition for size comparison. The deluxe editions are also hardcover, whereas the individual volumes are paperback and they both feature totally different designs. The printing in the deluxe editions is better too. You can see more of their finer details thanks to the larger format, but there's also more contrast here thanks to the print and paper quality. I also noticed that the panels that fully extend to the edge of the pages are slightly less cropped at the bottom in comparison to the individual volumes. It's a small difference, but just wanted to note that. They made no changes to the translation aside from very, very small edits that I noticed, like when Anderson first comes into the picture and is talking to Integra, she calls him only Anderson in the individual volumes, but calls him Father Anderson in the deluxe. Small things are changed here and there, but aside from those, the way things are worded in the first deluxe edition is true to what's in the first individual volume. Also, from what I read in Saul, neither the individual or deluxe editions are censored, so they are as bloody and brutal as ever. Aside from their size and design, the only other thing that's different about the deluxe editions is their sound effects. In these editions, the sound effects are translated underneath the panels or directly on the panels underneath the original Japanese sound effects, whereas they aren't translated in the individual volumes. And there's no reference guide in the individual volumes that translate them either, so this is definitely a nice addition. The individual volumes also have a bonus story called Crossfire at the end of them as well as commentary by Koto Hirano that are fun to witness and read, but these are all included at the end of Deluxe Edition 3, so all of the extras you get at the end of the individual volumes are included in the final volume of the Deluxe Editions, in addition to a cover art gallery and some nice full-color illustrations. I saw some people on Reddit upset that they didn't see these in the first two volumes, so wanted to make sure you guys knew that they were included in the third. I'll flip through these for you guys so that you can see all the extras after I review and flip through the first volume, so stick around for that. So one of the biggest benefits to these, of course, is their larger format and the way these are designed and look. And they are in that 7x10 format, which is the same size as the Berserk Deluxe Editions. These have a really nice look to them with the bold red pleather, almost in this blood red color that's wrapped around the cover. The Hellsing logo itself looks incredible, and it really looks as though it's been slashed since it's raised. And also the cross in the center is embossed into the volumes as well, which is really cool. I also want to mention that these are a lot less textured than the Berserk Deluxe Editions as seen here, so the Hellsing Editions have a smoother finish to them. Everything seen on the spine is raised as well, so these look amazing both on and off the shelf. So inside, you can see the print and quality of these, which is absolutely top-notch, but this is something I've come to expect from the Deluxe Editions. Their print quality and the way Koto Hirano's art looks in these volumes due to their larger format are two reasons as to why I recommend these over the individual volumes. The paper quality too is much better than the individual volumes. The deluxe editions paper have a brighter, more pure white color to them in comparison. And with that bright color of the paper and how dark the blacks look on these pages, the contrast is just amazing. Koto Hirano is an incredible artist and these deluxe editions really do his art justice. In addition, the deluxe editions are read in the original right to left reading format to preserve the orientation of the original artwork, which I really appreciate as well. Also, I quickly want to note that these have a built-in bookmark, which is nice. These are thick volumes, so it's nice to have these to save your place while reading. If you end up needing them, though, because I ended up just flying through the volumes since they were so addicting to read. The sound effects as mentioned prayer are translated on the pages as well, which is a first. Price-wise, the deluxe editions are up at the time of this video on Write Stuff for $37.49 USD each, and on Amazon, the first volume is even lower at $27.88, while the second is going for $33.36, and the third is up for $37.08. I added those links in the description below in case you want to check them out. The individual volumes are out of print, so the prices of the individual volumes vary, but I saw a recently sold listing for all 10 volumes on eBay that sold for $250. With that said, the deluxe editions are probably the easiest way to fully collect the series since the individual volumes are out of print and these are cheaper to buy, especially when they are on sale. One unique thing I want to mention about Helsing is that a few of the characters' dialogue is written with their accents in mind, such as Anderson who is Irish or Pip who has a French accent, and there are German accents in this as well. 
I must admit that I found it hard to know what certain characters like Anderson in particular were saying at first because it was a new way to read for me. I found myself reading his quote bubbles out loud at times, but I really ended up loving this over time and it was something I got used to. It is an interesting way to add even more character to these characters. So if you've never picked up Helsing before, it's a story that's not only rooted in history, but also fantasy, almost like an alternate history, and it really plays up on conspiracy theories. So if you're a fan of these types of things, you'll definitely enjoy this one. The conspiracy theory that is explored in Helsing is the one that believes some Nazis fled to South America after World War II, and in this story they did and they were stirring in the shadows this whole time. I don't want to get into too much about that because I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, it's full of bloodshed and carnage, and there's a lot of different layers to it and different organizations at play here, including Helsing, an organization in London that defends the country from monsters like vampires and who the vampire Alucard fights for, and Iscariot that's operated by the Catholic Church and includes characters like Anderson. These two organizations are at odds due to differences in religion, so this adds even more to the story. It really explores the nature of what it means to be immortal and what it means to be a vampire, which ultimately means giving up your humanity. It has unique twists and turns, and there are so many things that will surprise you along the way, and the art within Helsing is striking, but the story is incredible too. On top of all that, I really love the characters with Alucard, who's arrogant yet extremely likable and is one of my favorite antiheroes. Or Integra, um, she is fearless, calm, and collected and is the director of the Helsing organization. Walter, one of the most badass butlers. Saris, or as everyone else calls her, police girl, who develops incredibly over the course of the volumes and adds some lightheartedness to the series. And of course, Pip, who's a scamp but a good-hearted man through and through, being some of my favorites. There's just so many amazing characters that make this one a joy to read. The action and graphic nature of this series is another reason why I love it. This is a story that involves war and supernatural creatures like vampires who live by drinking others' blood, so I appreciate the fact that he held nothing back. If you want to experience Helsing, I highly recommend going with the deluxe editions over the individual volumes. The sound effects are translated, the print quality is top-notch, and they are nicely designed and well-made, and the large format makes the art in the series look that much more amazing. Not to mention the third deluxe edition includes all of the commentary and crossfire side story we've seen in the end of the individual volumes, as well as extras never seen in the individual volumes before. Here's a quick look at all of that. So first off, you have the Crossfire bonus story, then you have all of the extra materials including the cover art gallery with all of the 10 individual volumes covers as well as material that wasn't included in the Dark Horse individual volumes but were included in another edition. Also guys, I love all of the comedic additions that include references to Gundam including one sketch that has the RX-78-2 on it. This one in particular really cracked me up though. How could Xeon have won, he asks, and he responded with if Giren had found a red behelot. Fun to read these and all of these are great additions and then of course you have the full color gallery illustrations which are some of my favorite additions and these are absolutely beautiful. Anywho, I wanted to show you guys these extras included in volume 3 because I wanted you guys to know that these were all included. With the addition of these extras, the Crossfire bonus story, and the fact that they include everything added in the individual volumes and then some, the Helsing Deluxe Editions are well worth it and are the best manga release of Helsing to come out so far. That's my full review of the Helsing Deluxe Editions. What do you guys think of these editions? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys next time.